Hey, welcome to chapter four video. Now I realize the last couple chapters, the, uh, the videos have gone pretty long, but we've got all the base stuff done with Excel, how to make formulas, name cells, uh, make some graphs and stuff. So this video hopefully will go by pretty quickly because there's just a few new things to learn. All right, on the uh, first spreadsheet here, uh, which is the syntax worksheet, uh, pages 176 to 178 of the book. Uh, they're just pointing out some things with functions that we've talked about before. Uh, pi, if you ever need it, it's pi, open and then close parentheses. Factorial, uh, there's uh, a factorial, uh, four factorial, for instance, is four times three times two times one. That's what a, a factorial is. Uh, two factorial be two times one. And one factorial is actually defined as, uh, well, let's see, fact zero, what's zero factorial? It's defined as one. Okay, so we'll put four in. All right, so that's factorials. Now, one of the things with the sum I wanted to show you is you look up into this formula bar, you can actually um, select non-contiguous cells, which means cells that aren't touching each other. All right, let me just show you down here in this lower part how I did that. So if you do equal and sum, okay, and left parentheses, and then you usually, you know, you highlight, let's see, those three, the 10, the 12, the 14. All right, then what you do is you hit control on the keyboard. So control and then I am going to select these two and notice that the D8 and D9 come up and there was a parenthesis or a, a comma put in there uh, and now we close the parentheses and we put OK. Alright so that's just how you do a non-contiguous things. Uh, we've done formulas before. Remember pasting things out. Notice that apostrophe. I'm just going to go over this one more time because you're going to do this uh, many, many times. So I'm just going to delete that uh, cell right there. So remember what we do. We highlight the formula in the cell. We do control C. We put OK or enter to exit that. We go to the cell we want to paste the formula in. We put an apostrophe, we do control V, and usually I like to bold it, which I have. All right, so that's it there. So now we can go on to the next one, which is uh, part sizes. Okay, so we'll go here. And there's just uh, a couple things new here with part sizes, which uh, begins on page 179 of the book. And I'm just uh, flipping over to that point. There is a, uh, a nifty little uh, function called convert that allow you to convert from one cell to or from one set of units to another. Uh, here you see the format up in the top convert B4 is the cell you want to convert uh, or, for, or the value you want to use to do the conversion and then you have to put in quotes inches and then millimeters. So the first one is what uh, the units are presently in and the second one is what you're putting them into. Now let's say that, you know, hey, I don't know anything about convert. How do I find anything? Well, one thing is you could look in your textbook on page 179 and 180. And on 180, there's a nice table of all the abbreviations that Excel uses for various types of units. Now, assuming you don't have your book with you, or maybe you didn't even buy the book, I don't know. Uh, let's say, say, where do I find that stuff? All right, here's the best way to find stuff about functions. Put equals and then put the fx insert function. And let's just put in the um, search bar over here, convert. And T was on there, get rid of it. All right, so go, there's convert. Okay, so I put okay. Now, it has number from what unit to what unit, but let's look at help on this function. Okay, so I click on that, it has help. Okay, so notice the help shows you all the different things, and notice they have everything in quotes because that's how you're supposed to use it. Okay, so this is the exhaustive list, and it goes down and down and down and down and down. Okay, so there's lots of different uh, things you can do. So 
keep in mind this FX up here, I'm just going to cancel this out. This FX right there uh, can help you out. Now, there's some interesting things over here on the side. Okay, when you type in 3 8, and I'm going to go over here to the J cell, and let's say you type in 3 space 1 divided by 8. All right, and you go like that. Oh, and it works. What the heck? Oh, it automatically came in as a fraction. Now, maybe that was just luck. Let's do 3 space 1 divided by 8. Put OK. Oh, so I guess the new value of Excel is smart enough to know that that was a fraction and it automatically uh, took it from a general to a fraction. Well, that's rather nice. In the past, it, it wouldn't do that, and then you had to come up here and change it to a, a fraction. Now let's try another one that uh, used to not work. Like this one right here, 4, is supposed to be 4 and 1 tenth. So let's do 4 space 1 divided by 10. Okay, I'm going to put OK. And now it's just 4. What happened to the 1 tenth? It's a fraction, but what the heck? Well, we're going to come down here, and I'm going to go to more number formats. And I come up here in a fraction, and the default is up to one digit, okay, in the numerator and denominator. One divided by four. So since one tenth has two digits, it just wipes out that part. So what you have to do is you have uh, something with two digits, like one tenth, which has two in the denominator. You have to hit up to two digits, and it shows me what. I'm going to look like, so I put OK. So that's the one thing right there uh, that you got to watch out for. Uh, you have to override uh, to get to two digits on that one. So if I don't see four and a tenth there, then I know you didn't listen to me. All right, how about down here? How do we format um, a cell that has text in it in this uh, vertical way? Okay, well, up here on alignment, there is this right here. Now, there's all these predetermined ones that I don't even understand. I like this one right here, which is called Format Cell Alignment. Okay, now you can just use this drag thing over here. So normally, text is like this. All right, it's, it's horizontal in the cell. But if you want it vertical, remember, just go down to this Format Cell Alignment. And you can make it go any way you want. You can have the text go down or up, whichever way you think might be easier to read. All right, so that's what your part sizes uh, spreadsheet should look look at, look like. Sorry. All right, let's go to Pito Tube, and this is something that's on page 182 and 183 of your text. Uh, nothing really spectacular here other than we're using the conversion atmospheres to Pascals. We're, uh, we're naming a cell density. Now one of the things is, especially when we get into some of the later ones like projectile motion statics, uh, you're going to use like variables over and over again. Like let's say you want to use the, the variable angle. Now, you, you, the quick and dirty way is to just come up here, call this angle, hit enter, and you got this angle, okay? But remember, and this is something you'll want to do, and I'll remind you uh, as the time goes on, the more sophisticated way to do the formula, uh, do the, the um, variable names, is to go to the formula tab, go to the name manager, do new, and here you type it in, and you make the scope just the, the worksheet that you're on, not the entire workbook. All right, so we'll get to that later on. All right, so I have pasted out nicely over here to the right how the formula should be. Notice density, we have named that cell density, and uh, that's all we need to say about that. The sum worksheet, and uh, this goes over to page 184 to 185 of the text. That just shows some, some various things. Um, let me look at this one right here. So this is some B10 to B12. Now, if you have text in a cell, then the sum function is just going to ignore it, 
it's going to pretend it's not even there. So it's not smart enough to do like words to number. Okay. Uh, so the the answer here you can see is 24. It just forgets that 12 altogether. Um, you can sum. Here's non-contiguous cells again. So you know how do you get this up in here? You use the control again. So you can highlight the first set. You hold down control, you do the second set, you hold down control, you do the third set, and there you go with a 63. Look at how we're just gliding through this workbook uh, in Chapter 4. That's because you're getting so good at this stuff. Trig. All right. Here's some things about trig. Anytime you use the sine, cosine, tangent in Excel, it assumes that the angle uh, that is the so-called argument in the sine or cosine function is in radians. So we're often going to have to convert from degrees to radians. And there's a function called radians that does that. So um, I've pasted it out the side. Uh, over here, uh, sometimes when you're in radians, you have common fractions that you're using, like pi over 4, pi over 3, pi, 2 pi. So this second uh, row uh, second column is all uh, fra you know, these fractions. And then this other row is converting from F5, which would be the radians, into degrees. So if you want to convert from degrees to radians, you use something called radians. And when you want to go from radians to degrees, you use degrees. All right. That brings you to projectile motion one. And this worksheet uh, is a couple pages ahead in your book. It's on page 189 to 191. It's just some practice using formulas. And also look here, you know, uh, since the angle up here given is 35, that's degrees. Uh, when I put that value in the function sine, I have to use the radians function to convert the angle from degrees to radians. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, the rest of these I've named cells, just as you see. Uh, so make sure you name your cells, put all your units down. That's a nice looking spreadsheet, okay? Uh, remember the mark of a good spreadsheet? I should be able to just change one of my inputs up here, everything else ups, updates. Okay, so nice little spreadsheet right there. Let's go to statics. And uh, here, this is uh, in the textbook on page 192 to 194. And if you've taken any physics yet, um, one of the things you do with uh, forces is you have to break them down into their vertical and horizontal portions. And these are the various formulas that I have. And, and these are on your, uh, your homework sheet as well. So once again, just make sure that uh, you know, you're, you're uh, naming your cells as it shows here. There's F2, there's angle 2. You know, I would suggest you use the name manager because you might want to use these again on one of the, the problems later on. So keep in mind, if you're on a cell, you want to use the name manager. Click right up there, do new, and make sure the scope is just the worksheet that you're in. Okay, so very good. We're getting there. Tank. I feel really great today, so I, I hope you can hear it in my voice. Let's take a look. Here we're going to revisit the um, uh, we're going to revisit the if function. So we have a few name cells up here, which is uh, well, got a lot of name cells. But this one is uh, no, let's see, operating volume. This is tank capacity. This is actual volume. All right. So this first one, we have an if statement. So if your actual volume is less than your operating volume, then we're going to have true and false. So you could have numbers out here. The first thing here true is if this if this test that's in the first section. So there's three sections of the if statement. First part is the test. And the test is true, then the cell will fill up with what's after the first um, comma. If it's false, it'll do what's on the second. Okay, so if you want the actual 
uh, words true or false to come out. Those are actual functions, and uh, that's how you do it. Now, is the tank full? You know, if your actual volume is bigger than your tank volume, tank operating volume, then you'd have true for that. Is the tank overflowing? You're overflowing if your actual volume is bigger than the whole capacity of the tank. So let's say, uh, you know, and once again, a spreadsheet is good if we are able to go here to the actual volume. And let's say that somehow we're at 14 hundred uh, liters. Now, maybe that's impossible. If the tank only has a capacity of 1350, how's it ever going to get bigger than 1350? Unless maybe there's an overflow reservoir or something. All right, so if I put 14 under here, it says that uh, I'm not, I shouldn't be filling the tank anymore. Uh, the tank's full and the tank is overflowing. And if the tank is full, shut the valve. Now, here's a test tank full with just a word because in this tank full right here this cell this blue cell because that's going to be filled with the true or false uh, that is in indeed all the test there needs to be because this value tank full will be either true or false and uh, in this case since it's true the first thing is we have to shut the valve uh, if we weren't overflowing we weren't above the uh, the amount so let's say we only had 800 in here uh, we don't have any action we would need because the tank is not full so we go to the second thing none is required beautiful most of you next semester are going to take uh, digital systems and you can do a lot of conversions from binary to to decimal decimal to octal and hexadecimal and so forth. So this could be very useful for you next semester unless your instructor says hey you can't use Excel or your calculator for this. But on the left here we've got some uh, well we have a decimal number 43 and we want to convert that to these three different bases and as you can see uh, each of these have two arguments the, the value that you want to convert and then the second one is going to be how many uh, how many digits of precision that you want. So since I have eight, it's going to have eight digits. Okay. If uh, the number doesn't need eight, it's going to just what's known as pad to the left with zeros, as you see. And that just makes things a little bit more readable. You can go from uh, from decimal or uh, I, sorry, from binary back to decimal. So those are the various formulas. They're in the textbook uh, on page 200. That's a pretty easy one. All right, creating random numbers. Okay, a lot of times you might want to do simulations of maybe manufacturing processes or something. And you'd like uh, Excel to create random numbers. All right, so let me just say, you know, I want to create four rows of 25 numbers. All right, so first thing is, um, I'm going to go to the Home tab, and I'm going to go to Data. I didn't need to go home. And there's Data Analysis in, is in here. If you don't see Data Analysis, okay, on your... Um, out here to the right under the analysis, or you won't even have this analysis, then you have to do something called Add It In. So since most uh, casual Excel users don't use data analysis and some of these other higher powered things very much, and those are fairly large packages, uh, Excel doesn't load them in to memory every time you do, every time you start it up. So you might have to go to File, and you're going to go to Options, and in here is something called Add-ins. So you do Add-ins. Okay, I've already added, but it, you'll, your analysis tool pack may be grayed out. If it is, you click on it, and then you just hit Go, and then it'll come up with different things. Uh, maybe I want to add the solver in. Later on, we're going to use this. This is a real powerful tool, this solver. It's just awesome. Uh, but anyway, let's just use the uh, analysis tool pack, the regular one. So now it's in there. All right, so let's go ahead and, and say that we want to make four columns with 25 each. So I, I come up here to data analysis. Now once it's added in, now there's all kinds of things I can do up here. Um, 
and one of the things is going to be a random number generator. So I put OK. Now, number of variables. Um, I'm going to have to get some help on that to know what that is. You can just leave it blank. Uh, if you want, you can put a 1 in there. But uh, for our needs, we don't need to put that field. So the number of random number generators you want to put down in each column is 25. The distribution, well, a uniform distribution would be um, all the possible numbers in the set would all have equal probabilities of occurring. We're going to get to this later on when we do statistics in the course. A lot of times when there's random um, uh, errors in, in, a, uh, in a set or random variation, you'll have what's known as a normal distribution. A normal distribution is the so-called bell-shaped curve where most of the occurrences are near what's known as the mean. As you get further from the mean, um, there's fewer uh, occurrences. So we're going to have normal, all right, and then you can tell the, the generator what do you want your theoretical mean to be. Uh, I put 75, and then the standard deviation is how much spread about the mean. The bigger the standard deviation, the more the, the bell curve is spread out and uh, values don't hover, you know, quite as closely to the mean. All right, random seed. All right, sometimes you might want to create an, and do a simulation over again with the exact same set of data. All right, so the first data on the left that you see, I create it with a random seed of 10. Okay, if I use the same random seed, I'm going to get the same exact values. So you're saying, well, that doesn't sound like very, um, very random. Well, just then just don't put a random seed in there and then you'll get something more random. So you can either use 10 and get the same values I have or just let's leave it blank. Okay, I'll hit delete. Now the output range. So let me click on this little icon. And right now, because I've done this previously, it's saying that's where you want to put this stuff. Now you can either highlight the whole block of 4 times 25 or since I've already told it that I want 25 values in each row or in each column, I can just highlight the, the columns that I want to fill. I click on this. So I'm going to put 25 values down in each of these columns. So I'll put OK. And notice I get different values than here. Now, if I take the, the average of this set of data, it should be very close to the 75 that I put in, but it won't be exactly. Just like these aren't exactly 75 and 15 because we have a relatively small sample. Uh, notice I used a named variable called data table. Just like you can name a cell, you can name a whole table. And you can do it the quick and dirty way, or you can use the uh, formulas name manager. Okay. So those are uh, a little bit about random numbers. You can make them quickly, you can delete them quickly. Okay, date and time. All right, these are some fun things you can put in. Uh, there's actually a function called today. So as soon as I opened up this spreadsheet, it recalculated what today's date was. Okay, even though I originally made this uh, spreadsheet back in 2008, it knows that that's today. Now, both of these are the same formula. One is, for, one is formatted as a date and one as a number. So the first one up here, if you're not formatted as a date, you can come up here and you can format as a date. And right here, there's long date, there's short date, so I'm going to use short date. Once again, if you don't see what you want, you can do more numbers and go to date. There's all kinds of date formatting that you can use. The second one here is just a straight number format. So uh, this function today actually brings back a number that has a certain meaning. Uh, I'm not going to get into it here because I don't know it. Alrighty, you can extract the year, the month, the day from a date. Okay. Uh, date once you and you can make a date if you give the month, day, and year. So uh, 
just like year, month, and day, extract those values. Date puts them all together. You can format them as a date or a number. There's actually now, so you can see that, uh, well, it says 2.36.58 p.m. Um, maybe every time I hit enter on that one, it'll update. So those are some other functions over on the side for time. All right. Now we're getting into the last one, grades. There is a cool function, and I use this in my grading book for all my classes. It's VLOOKUP. All right. So let's just talk about what's in this sheet, first of all. So first of all, I make this uh, these values right here. Okay, all those shaded values. Notice that I've named that grade table. Okay, that way it makes the formula just look a lot better. Grade table uh, instead of putting like dollar sign something dollar sign. Okay, so there's uh, there's the grade table. So the way you interpret this is um, anything bigger than a nine a 93 or bigger will give you an A. Okay, and you have to do it in this uh, ascending order. All right, so the VLOOKUP. The first thing the VLOOKUP does is take your score. It then goes to the grade table, and then it's going to return the value in column 2 that corresponds to the proper one in, in the column 1. So since a 79.99 is bigger than the 77, but not bigger or equal to the 80, this poor soul, whose name is black, gets a 79.99, okay? Now, black, Mr. Black comes to you and uh, as a teacher and says, what the H? Oh, sorry, um, how come I'm getting a B minus? Because he did this and I'm gonna decrease the decimal, watch what happens, okay? so. Mr. Black comes and says, hey, I got an 80.0. I'm looking at the grade scale, and hey, I don't get a B. I'm getting a B minus. Okay, now here's the little thing. Although we've reduced the number of decimals to, to one, we haven't changed the number. So I increase the decimal. It's still really 79.99, which we can choose to display to one decimal place. But that 0.99 is still haunting Mr. Black. So maybe he shouldn't have come late that one day, or maybe he shouldn't have forgotten to do the last problem on the last homework. Now, since most instructors don't want to deal with students whining about one one hundredth of a point, like yours truly here, John Waddock, all right, what I do is I will round my scores to either the whole number or to maybe get usually I do it to a tenth all right so in this case if I rounded these scores to no decimal places or even to one decimal place okay let's just try one decimal place all right and Mr. Black would now be getting a B why because no matter how many decimals I run this to I've rounded to the first place so there's no 0.99 anymore. And if you want to just round to the nearest whole number, you just put a zero in there. I'm going to just decrease the decimal. All right, so these rounded scores are now to the ones place. There is no decimal portion. So Mr. Black gets an 80 here. He gets a B. He's happy. I'm happy. Everybody's happy. All right, that's it. So coming upon you uh, are going to be some, some new spreadsheets uh, that are the problems in the book. I'm just going to show you a hint for the next one, Projectile Motion 2, because it entails something we haven't done yet. Now, your instructor may want to lecture on some of the other problems, but in this video, I will not. Okay. Uh, trig 2... Well, I guess trig 2 is another one um, that is more of a tutorial style. And I just kind of skipped over that. Sorry. Uh, 
this is pretty self-explanatory. We have angles and degrees. We have angles. We convert those to radians. Uh, remember, you're going if you're using sines and cosine, you need to use the radian measure. All right. And so these are different trig identities. So go ahead and do that. So these two columns should always be the same. These two columns should always be the same. And these two columns should always be the same. All right, that gets us to projectile motion two. All right, so here is the setup on the spreadsheet. And this is actually given into your homework. All right. Now, this 15 right here, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to find what value of the launch velocity V1 will get the ball into the basket. Now, to get into the basket, you have to land at x equal to 21.36 and y at 1.8 because that must be uh, that's six foot we went from feet to meters okay so in physics we're always doing things in in meters and seconds not feet and inches uh, the sooner the United States goes to the metric system fully the easier everything will be now, the one thing people sometimes say is, hey, it's so complicated, the metric system. No, it's not. Just ask any drunk, what's 750 milliliters? They'll show you. All right, so notice this actual Y2. That's supposed to be at 1.8. Now, you could try to get your answer by doing this. Okay, well, I'm going to make 14. Let's try that. Ooh, that's not good enough okay I'm, I'm too low so you make it hey how about 16 that's too high so now you say how about 15 oh we're getting close now you can keep guessing forever or you can use something called goal seek all right it hasn't been presented in the book yet but here's your chance to shine okay so you're first gonna just put a guess in here and that guess was not correct. So here's what we do. We are going to go, let's see, to the Home tab. And we don't see it, so let me go to, maybe it's in Data. It is in Data. And there's called What If Analysis. So I'm going to just hit that drop down. And I'm going to use something called Goal Seek. Now watch how Goal Seek works. All right. So what you do is set cell. Okay, that's the cell that you want to target in on a given value. So I want that C18 to target to a value of this right here. Now, I'd like to click on this cell, but it notice, did you hear that? It doesn't allow me. So Goal Seek does have the limitation of you actually have to type in the, uh, the value. If I was doing a revision of Excel, I would want to be able to just uh, click on a cell. All right, so C18 is the value that we're trying to get equal to 1.8228. And we're going to do that by changing this cell right here. OK? And then when you hit OK, Excel's going to go through a bunch of iterations and come up with an answer. Now, I don't want to do that here because I don't want students who haven't done the goal seek to get the right answer. So you do goal seek. Remember, it's in data. What if analysis, goal seek. You know now how to, to do it. I'm going to leave the rest of the problems for you to figure out. Hey, the more you figure out, the more you use that brain on you, the more interconnections go into your brain, the smarter a person you get to be. All right, one day you'll be coming back and taking my job over. All right, until Chapter 5, I'll see you again.